Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to my channel Scarve Your Knowledge In our previous lectures we uh, have uh, completely covered the demand function, the supply function and today we are going to discuss a little bit about the equilibrium what the equilibrium point is all about, what is the equilibrium price, how we derive the equilibrium price and how the equilibrium quantity is being derived out of that equilibrium price. So these are all the things that we are going to consider today in our lecture. Alright, I've plotted uh, uh, price again on the vertical axis and the quantity on the horizontal axis. Today on this graph we are going to study the equilibrium, how we are going to uh, get the equilibrium with the supply and the demand curve. Basically, if you talk about the uh, equilibrium, it is uh, the interaction of the demand and supply which determines the equilibrium price. So, whenever the demand and supply come together in an exchange and when they agree upon certain price, and on that price they agreed to deliver certain quantity the supply side and the demand side is agreed to purchase that certain quantity or that point is going to be called the equilibrium point and the quantity that is bought on that particular um, um, price that equilibrium price is called the equilibrium quantity so basically the equilibrium price is the single price which incentivizes both uh, the suppliers either they are farmers or the uh, suppliers in the market present in the market and the consumers to engage in an exchange so there would be an incentive for both the uh, both the suppliers and the consumers on that particular uh, price which is why they are going to come uh, in in the in the in the transactional uh, process and which is why they would exchange and uh, sell and purchase certain amount of the commodity or the service here we are taking the example of uh, rice so we would see that at what price the consumers are uh, willing to buy the how much quantity and the suppliers are willing to uh, uh, the sell how much of the quantity so the rice is being taken in the kg's unit and the price is taken in the dollar's unit. So let's just see. Here as we can see, uh, first we would draw the, uh, uh, the demand function. Let's suppose when the price was $10, the consumers were willing to buy only 100 kg's. Now at this point in time we are talking about the uh, all the buyers in the market and all the suppliers in the market, right? Now when the price decreased to 8 units, now the consumers are willing to buy. I just want to give you the rough idea. Uh, they just want to buy at the $10 price. As it has the inverse relationship which means that higher the price the lesser will be the quantity demanded by the consumers so at $10 price the quantity demanded was 100 uh, kgs of the rice in the whole market when the price reduced to $8 for some reason the quantity demanded was 200 again when the price reduced to six dollars, the quantity is demanded is three hundred. When the price reduced to four hundred, the quantity demanded is four hundred. Sorry, when the when the price reduced to four dollars, the quantity demanded is four hundred, and when the price reduced to two dollars the quantity the maximum quantity that was demanded on the graph is 500 kgs of the rice now this downward sloping thing is going to give us the now we would erase all the other stuff uh, and we would just keep on having these points 
Now these points are going to give us the demand curve. I hope you got how I derived this demand curve. Now I'm going to erase all the stuff and we would draw the supply side. All right, I've erased all the other things and I've already plotted the supply uh, uh, curve as well uh, to make it more easier for you to understand. Now the supply curve, what it says is when the price was $2, the suppliers were not that much eager to uh, sell their uh, uh, product or commodity. So they were only willing to uh, sell the 100 uh, kgs of the rice. When the uh, price increased to $4, the supplier was now willing to sell uh, 200 uh, kgs of the rice. Now at $6 price, the suppliers are now willing to uh, supply 300 uh, kgs of the rice and when the price increased to $8, now the suppliers are willing to uh, sell uh, 400 kgs and when the price raised to $10, now the suppliers are uh, willing to uh, sell 500 kgs. I think it must be here. So the supply curve would be something like this. Okay. Now this is the demand curve, the downward sloping curve. This is the supply curve, the upward sloping curve, which means that the supply, higher the price, higher the quantity supplied or higher the, uh, uh, the quantity that supplier will be willing to supply. These are all the things which we have already uh, studied uh, in our previous lectures in a very detailed way. Now, what is the equilibrium point? Basically, equilibrium point as we have say that that is the point of negotiation or the agreed point of exchange and that is the single price at which the suppliers are willing to supply a certain quantity that quantity which the suppliers are willing to supply at this agreed point would be called the equilibrium quantity and the price at which the suppliers and the buyers both are agreed to um, sell and uh, uh, purchase the product respectively is called the equilibrium price. So equilibrium price is the price which actually exists in the market or towards which the market is moving where the quantity demanded by consumers equals the quantity supplied by the producers. And now the quantity about which we are talking, which is 300 units. Now the quantity of a good determined by the equilibrium price, where the amount of output that consumers demand is equal to the amount that producers want to supply. So we have already uh, said this that equilibrium price is the single price which incentivizes both uh, the suppliers and the consumers to engage in a mutual exchange. So this is the mutual agreed price and the quantity from both the parties. This is to what we call the equilibrium. Now, in a real life, this equilibrium is not always just the same. It differs. There comes the point of disequilibrium also due to the other factors that are involved or that... Uh, that distract this equilibrium. It could be the supplier sides uh, also, or the uh, or the uh, uh, the uh, consumer side also. The factors could be neutral also, which means that uh, it is it, it affects both the suppliers and the consumers. Eventually, obviously, when the equilibrium is disturbed, 
so both the suppliers and the consumers have to pay the price for that so or it could or it is uh, good for one uh, for one party and not good for the other party so in order to make it a win win situation you need to bring it back the market they, there are certain forces uh, which are called individual forces or the market forces they could be internal forces or the external forces that that bring about the again the equilibrium in the market now these disequilibriums uh, occur due to different factors they could be internal factors they could be external factors so whenever there is an imbalance uh, in the market then the forces will be set in motion to push the price back towards equilibrium if we assume that there are no market impediments or uh, governmental policies exist that would prevent equilibrium from being reached because if there are some governmental policies um, 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 that exist or if, if it's not a free market uh, the free market means that uh, there are no government obligations involved in the market and the market itself decide what uh, uh, the buyer side and the supplier side both uh, agree on a point that uh, on which they want to trade off so if it's a market which is being uh, which has a certain uh, obligation which need to uh, uh, abide by the rules and regulations of the uh, government so at such mar in such market uh, it would uh, it would prevent uh, to again get to that equilibrium or it would set up uh, and make one of the other equilibrium or the equilibrium would be moved either um, on the lower side or on the upper side but before moving to the to any of the uh, directions there would be a kind of a shortage or a surplus we would discuss what the shortage or the surplus is in our next lecture for but for now we are just uh, making a point about uh, the equilibrium so as we have uh, said and as we have uh, already um, observed it that uh, the demand and supply are both the functional relationships between the price of a good and the quantity demanded or supplied. But neither function by itself tells us what price will actually exist in the market. The price will be determined when the market is in equilibrium. So 6 is the equilibrium price and uh, 300 is the equilibrium quantity that is the agreed uh, price in the quantity. For our further uh, discussions about the disequilibrium or lower or the higher than the equilibrium prices and the kind of changes that come up when the, uh, when the equilibrium is being disturbed, uh, we would assume the same example and we would go with the same example uh, with the same commodity. Uh, but up till now, I hope it is uh, pretty much clear to you what the equilibrium or the basic concept about the equilibrium is. You will get a lot of uh, definitions on the internet or on the different uh, through different resources but i think the easiest way to understand the equilibrium is through the graph and uh, uh, when we were uh, doing our learnings we have all all we have also uh, made these kind of things to understand to make to develop understanding of the equilibrium and uh, i feel that this way it gets more easier for you to understand um, things when it is in, in, a, in an illustrative way. So that's all for now. Uh, stay tuned with us uh, for the next video as well. And please do subscribe to my channel as I need a lot of your support. And please uh, press the bell icon also so that you get notified for the further videos. Thank you so much.